This week is how old is the Earth? How precisely can we calculate a creation date based on both historical records and the Bible? That's our topic. Right. There's a great article by physicist uh, Russell Humphreys. And yes. it's available on, um, well, it's called Why Most Scientists Believe the World is Old. And if you want to follow along, it's at creation.com slash most dash scientists. And in the opening paragraph, he summarizes three fascinating ironies. Uh, one is that a majority of scientists, the evolutionists, rely on a minority of the relevant data. That's because only about 10% of dating methods give the vast ages required for evolution to work. Number two, a minority of scientists, the creationists, yes. <laughs> use the majority of the relevant data. So about 90% of all dating methods support a creation date that is too young for evolution. And number three, the public's impression is that it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you want a sample of some of the data Dr. Uh, Humphreys was alluding to, go to creation.com slash age and you'll see 101 evidences for recent creation. It's a great little article there. Yeah. Uh, so, so the question is then, if the evidence is so strongly for a young Earth, why do most scientists believe otherwise? And the answer is simple, and, and he says this in his article. Most scientists believe that the Earth is old because they believe that most other scientists believe that the Earth is old. Right. Uh, and then Dr. Humphreys relates how he was speaking with a geochemist at Sandia National Laboratories where he worked as a physicist. He presented him with one piece of evidence for a young world, the rapid accumulation of sodium in the oceans. Now this was an ideal dating method in this case because uh, with, to use with this geochemist, since much of geochemistry deals with chemicals in the ocean. Right. So given today's rates of sodium input into the oceans, it should be much saltier if their evolutionary age is correct. Right, so Dr. Humphreys wanted to see how he explained uh, possible ways for sodium to get out of the sea right. fast enough to balance the rapid input of sodium. After more than an hour, he finally admitted, uh, that the, the evolutionist said, he knew of no way to remove sodium from the sea fast enough. That would mean the sea could not be billions of years old. Realizing that, he said, since we know from other sciences that the ocean is billions of years old, such a removal process must exist. That's incredible, yeah. So he's placing his trust in other scientists. Right, exactly. When Dr. Humphrey started mentioning other young Earth evidences, he stopped him and said he didn't want to examine the evidence for himself because he said, People I trust don't accept creation. He yeah, said, wow. I trust Stephen Jay Gould. At that time, uh, Gould was a, a paleontologist, was, was still alive and considered the world's most prominent evolutionist. So that was his yeah. authority. Wow. So he, he trusted other authorities but ignored highly relevant data. In who his own field. In, in, in his own field, yeah. Uh, who do you trust? Who do you consider to be an authority on the age of the earth? And these yeah. are serious questions that, that you can consider. Yeah. Uh, what source of information do you trust to know, for example, that your sins have been forgiven? Uh, scientists? You would trust scientific data for that? Who do you trust with your eternal destiny? Is, is God not worthy of your trust in all areas? If, if you trust that he has paid for your sins on the cross, thereby making you fit for salvation, why wouldn't you also trust him with the date of creation? Or are, are you placing your uh, trust in Christians who twist God's word to try to make millions of years fit in where the text won't allow it? Christians don't determine truth. <laughs> That's right. It's not what Christians say. It's not about what Christians say. Christians don't determine truth.